If you're on the Aptition Works website and you are working your way through the ABO exam preparation test questions, that's a heck of a mouthful, isn't it? You're gonna come across one that I call a brain teaser. It's about a girl who's out playing soccer and her glasses get hit and I ask you to solve how much prism she experiences for a moment till she moves them back over. I have lost count of the number of times I get an email with people asking for help solving that one. So I'm gonna do one that's very, very similar to it, and we're gonna work it through start to finish over on the whiteboard, and let me see if I can't make it a little bit easier for you. We have got Jamal, and Jamal is away at summer camp at the moment. Jamal is only about nine years old, so he's not quite ready for contact lenses. Parents don't feel he's quite ready. Obviously, he's a little bit young for LASIK surgery. So Jamal is wearing a pair of glasses. He's got a minus seven, minus 150 at 100, and a minus 650, minus 150 at 115. Jamal is about ready to go out and do some horseback riding. So of course the counselors insist that he wears a helmet. And like many things at summer camp, the helmet's not in very good shape. There's a ton of padding on the left-hand side of the helmet and on the right side, there is none. So he puts on the helmet and it pulls the helmet way over to his left and his glasses subsequently get shoved over to the left as well, as if he was being hit on the right side of his head. Glasses are pushed this way. And it is now our job to determine what poor Jamal is going to experience for the rest of his horseback ride. <coughs> Let's figure it out. I've mentioned this before, doing a very similar problem. I get the email on this one so often I really genuinely believe that the biggest reason is that people just get anxious. <laughs> um, if you have very little experience with this stuff, and by the time you work it all the way through, I would easily expect 10 to 15 minutes of continuous work after you've gone back and checked things and done your drawing to actually reach the correct answer. Don't freak out because you go through all of this and you're not even halfway through the problem. Be wary of that while you're going through. If I have an error in that meridian, if my glasses move this way, my error is at the 0, 0180 line. It's this way. The glasses are not moving this way. They're not moving this way. They're not moving in an oblique meridian. They're getting shoved the perfect 180, zero, horizontal. So in order to solve this problem, I need the power at 180 degrees, the zero 180. What I have is 100 and 115. Neither one of those fits nice and neatly into our 30, 45, 60 rule. It's not gonna do it. I could use the powers in oblique meridians formula, but this is an ABO question. So we're going to try to use the rule or rule of thumb or the percent rule because it's a little bit faster and a little bit easier. 180 minus 100 tells me that the power that I need is 80 degrees away from what I have. My rules tell me, and that's the sheet where you have the percents broken down, that I will have 97% of my cylinder value in play 80 degrees away from my 100. For my left, I need 180. I have 115. 180 minus 115 tells me that the power that I need at 180 is 65 degrees away from what I have. 65 degrees away from where I am, I have 82% of my cylinder value. So now I have to figure out how much of that cylinder, what the exact amount is. If I take my 150 and I multiply it times my 97%, which 
change it to a decimal. It tells me that I have minus 1.45 of my minus 150 in play. If I take this cylinder value and I add it to my sphere value, minus 7 plus 1.45, I end up with minus 8.45 at 180 degrees. That is the power that I need to solve the problem for the right eye. If I take my cylinder value of minus 150 from my left and I multiply it times the 82% or convert it to a decimal 0.82, it looks like I have minus 1.23 of this 150 in play at 180 degrees. So now I have to take my minus 650 and add that amount to my sphere of power and I end up at minus 7.73 at 180 degrees. That's all we have so far. We have the power that we need to determine the error at 180 degrees. We haven't even begun determining prism amounts, directions, result, anything like that. All so far we've got is the power. See what I mean by taking it slow? It's gonna take a little while. Think about it. Good. How did I come up with this stuff? You know how I did it? I used a calculator, <laughs> all right? Um, if you're doing your ABO, you're sitting there, you're allowed to bring one in now. For goodness sake, use it. I mean, use it to subtract 100 from 80. Don't take the chance of, of stumbling or being nervous or, you can use it. You're allowed to have one. Use the darn thing. And that plus minus sign, again, is your best friend. Learn how to use it. All right, I'm gonna wipe the board clean and we're gonna take this number, this number, and this number and keep running with this problem. So we have our power at 180 in the meridian that we need, total power at 180. We have our amount that the glasses moved, which is six and a half millimeters over. When you put that helmet on, the glasses shifted over. Since we have our total power and we have our amount, amount and power, we can plug it into the PRISM formula. When we go through all of this, we're only about two thirds of the way through when we get to our answer. We still have another step to go. So again, patience, slow down, work the problem all the way through. If PRISM is equal to the amount the lens move times the power in that meridian, we can run with this. HCM 6.5, that's the amount. Amount of power, 845 equals 54.9. We divide by 10 to convert these from centimeters to millimeters, and we end up with 5.5 or five and a half diopters of error created in that lens. Super important. HCM times D, the amount the lens moved 6.5, multiplied times the power at that in the lens at that meridian, we end up with 50.2, divide by 10 to convert our millimeters from centimeters, and we end up at 5.0. Prism diopters created in that lens. The final answer is what happens when we put the two lenses together, because we have two eyes, two lenses, all pumping into one brain. What does the brain see when it has this combination? That is our final step, and that's the one we're gonna do next. Okay, there is Jamal. What is the single most important thing that we need to keep in mind when we're doing our prism drawings? Very good. The eyes don't move, the lenses move. Our power minus lenses, high minus. I'm going to draw my minus profiles. If I was struck on my right, if my glasses moved this way, my optical center is going to shift. My OCs both are going to be pushed that direction. If I draw a minus profile here, That's what would have happened. What is this person? What is Jamal looking through here? Base out. What is he looking through here? 
base in. You're only concerned with this particular prism shape. Look at where his pupil is. Look at where he's looking through. Here's his nose. What is that in relationship to the nose? It's base out. What is this one? Base in. If we look at our handy dandy chart, it tells us that base in, base out is a canceling situation. So you would subtract the two amounts. If I have 5.5 .5 and I subtract 5.0, I end up with half a diopter of prism error, very, very little. And the full answer, we are not done yet. The full answer is assigned this amount with the direction of the strongest eye. My strongest eye, my strongest amount is my right. I have 0.5 prism diopters base out in the right. That is it. If this was a compounding situation and I added these two together, you would have an answer for both the right and the left with an amount for each because it cancels, it's a net effect. Jamal, all he is getting is a little half a diopter prism. Base out in the right, he'll probably be fine and survive his horseback riding experience <laughs> just fine. There's absolutely no mathematical way of, of achieving this without being able to visualize the lenses and how they're being shifted on a human in relationship to those eyes, which do not move. So you, you just simply have to, <laughs> there's really no way around it. So hopefully that helps out. There's an ABO question uh, on the review test bank that is very, very close like this. It's uh, Simone playing soccer, I believe. So hopefully that'll help you guys out. I will see you next week.